great morning to you. A great one. We're in Ontario here. On the way down towards the Toronto area, I gotta deliver some freight into Newmarket, and then we're gonna go around to Kitchener, and then I don't know what's happening yet, but that's the plan right now. So without further ado, we're gonna head on down the road. I wanna get this stuff off my trailer. And the day cannot begin without a Timmy's. So we're uh, about an hour down the road already. I've had to drag my butt an hour down the road just to get my Timmy's. We're about a half hour from our destination. I'm just gonna quickly run in here and grab a quick coffee and a bite to eat and rush on over to the destination so that I can get to Kitchener. Which way do I gotta go here? Which way? This is a new on route, I think. Because I looked this one up on Google Maps last night to see how much parking was here, and there wasn't even a picture of it on Google Maps. So I guess now we'll see how much parking there is. I didn't come here because I didn't want to risk it because I kind of figured there's probably only like 10 spots. Because the way they build these rest areas like this, like all of this here, waste so much space that you could use for parking trucks and you have like a hundred parking spots for cars but ten for trucks and these here on the left are technically all for buses these guys are obviously just running in for coffees or something and then yeah you got ten ten or less spots over here so it costs a lot of money to build these uh fancy on roads right I'd say don't overthink them if I can give a message to the Ontario government you're wasting your money don't overthink them make them a little simpler and add more truck parking because the only thing I can think of when I when I see these on routes in Ontario other than the fact they're very nice inside they're very nice a lot of money went into them especially the interior all the stores in there the parking lot though I can tell you spent a lot of money into it, a lot of planning into where the traffic's gonna flow, where we're gonna put the trucks. A lot of planning, too much planning. I don't know if anyone up there is listening to this video, probably not, but in the slim chance that they are, you're overthinking things a little bit up there in the government. Uh, you don't need to make it so complicated and complex. Like we're human beings, we can figure things out. If you want to look at a really good example of a service area, I would say look at the service areas along the turnpikes uh, in states like Ohio, where they have probably close to 100, maybe even 200 parking spots for trucks or whatnot, but it's very simple. Wide open. None of this like, oh, you come in here, you gotta go all the way around here, down this little single lane, all the way around here, all the way over here, all the way over here, okay, and then there's some parking here. And if there's no parking for you, oh, too bad, you gotta go, there's nowhere to stop. They're very nice, don't get me wrong, very nice. Just a little overthought, a little bit too much thought went into them, just save your money, save your time. Just make a big open parking lot, paint some lines, and try to get as many parking spaces for trucks as possible. Because, I mean, the government is telling us we have to stop at a certain time, right? They're telling us exactly how long we can drive. So if they want us to stop after a certain amount of time, I believe the government then should be responsible to ensure that there is adequate, more than enough parking for everybody to stop legally when their time clock runs out. What do you think? That's my opinion. Love to know your opinion down below in the comment section. We've successfully completed our objective. One for Trucker Josh, zero for whoever's against me. How dare you be against me? Do you know who I am? All right, oh, of course, Murphy's Law. I wanna start rolling, that's when the parade rolls through town. Everybody decides to jump on the road as soon as I put it in gear. Here we go, here we go. Dizzy, you ready? We're going to Kitchener. Kitchener. I bet they have very nice kitchens in Kitchener. Well, sir, if you would have used your blinker, I would have known you were turning there. I'm sorry. I kind of drove in front of him. I didn't realize you were turning. Kitchener. Kitchener, Ontario. wonder why they called it Kitchener. A lot of Kitcheners around there. 
They make wonderful kitchens in Kitchener. I have no idea. We'll be uh, spending more time in Kitchener as we uh, have been in Guelph. Usually when I come into Ontario, I spend a lot of time bouncing around the Guelph area. It looks like I'll be spending a lot of time around the Kitchener area now too. Man, when is this parade gonna end? What is it, rush hour? Oh, it's lunchtime, that's why. Everybody's gonna go have their lunch. Another one, oh, for crying out loud. Trucker Josh needs to enter the roadway, thank you. Can you not see my big truck right here? Yeah, it looks, looks like we'll be spending some time around there. <coughs> so, off we go, 140 kilometers to there from here. We gotta go through Toronto. So, we may- Turn left on Davis Drive, then we, take ramp ahead. May run into some delays, we're just, just possibly. This, this is Toronto, so there could possibly, maybe, maybe be some delays. Here we go. can you say Toronto need I say more nope people here people there people on top of those people over there people more on pe people on top of those people everybody crammed into a little hole in the wall look at those buildings off on the left those are tiny ones but who wants to live in a little hole like, here's your cubby don't forget to pay your rent <laughs> you'll never own it but this is your hole like a little rabbit and a little weasel going into his hole I understand sometimes it's okay to rent. I, I, I'm not against renting. I rented for a while, but why make it a like a, a permanent lifestyle with no plans to ever get out of it? I don't know. I guess what I'm talking about is no plans on getting out of a apartment or a condo. Some people, some people actually buy condos. They buy an apartment. They buy a hole in a building with dozens of other people who own other holes in the same building. And they all live in the same building together. Why? I don't understand the logic of living in a city. Other than, I do understand this, convenience. I understand the convenience factor. I'm trying to get a discussion going here about living in the city versus living in the countryside. Me, I am a country boy through and through, right down to my very core. The only time you would find me living in a city is if I absolutely, absolutely had no other choice. I would rather sit in a car, in traffic, in rush hour, commuting to work, than living in a hole in a wall right beside my work. Uh, I, first of all, I don't think I would ever get a big fancy office job downtown in a city anyways. That means I've got to be in a city every day. It's just, I wouldn't want to sit at a desk every day, staring at a computer every day, sitting in the same chair every day looking at the same thing every day, talking to the same people every day. That lifestyle is for many people, not for me. I'd love to know what you think. You know, in Canada, what is it, something like 80% of the population lives in an urban center? And in America, it's a little spread out because Americans enjoy their freedom and their countryside a little more. I think it's about 50-50 living in cities versus living in rural areas. In one way, it's nice. Because me living in a rural area, I'm what, part of the 20% of people that actually get it that we shouldn't live in big cities because it's just crazy? That means that 80% of the people are compacted into these tiny little areas, leaving the rest of the ginormous countryside of Canada to me and my friends in the country. Thank you very much. 
That way we get to be around even less people. Works out great, doesn't it? Just about near Welland, Ontario. I unloaded my freight there in Kitchener today. It took most of the day. We've made ourselves over to Welland. We're gonna pick up a load here going to Iowa tomorrow. Well, we're picking it up tomorrow. We're not gonna be in Iowa tomorrow, I don't, I don't think. I'll have to look at the miles, but I'm just gonna go to the Flying J that's nearby so that I can grab a shower off of them because they do have the best showers on the road, just saying. They have the little keypad thing. Makes you feel like James Bond. All the other places still use keys. They're still back in like the 90s. Today's vlog, I'm guessing, will be a little shorter. Who knows? Maybe it'll end up being a little longer. But I, I, I really didn't drive very far today. Here at the Flying J in Fort Erie, Ontario. It was a little ways past my destination, which is in Welland, Ontario. About 20 minutes past, but you know, I wanted to take this opportunity while I had some time tonight to take a shower. This guy's got the dreaded backup beeper. You backing up or not? Guess not. So many trucks. I, I find it to be more of a Canadian thing that have backup beepers on highway trucks. I understand backup beepers on the city trucks, just highway trucks, it's so unnecessary. Just wakes everybody up. I mean, say you were sleeping in your house and the people next door were doing renovations or landscaping in their yard. Like, how would you like it if they had their machinery backing up beside your house, like right beside your bedroom, at three in the morning? You know how all those construction tractors have their big backup beepers as well? I don't think you'd like that right beside your bedroom in your house, middle of the night. I already reserved my shower using my Pilot Flying J app, the My Pilot app. So yeah, using the MyPilot app, I was able to reserve this shower from my truck in the My Reservations tab. My rewards, my reservations. Very handy. I just wish it would tell you on the app when your shower was ready, or if you have to wait, or how many people are before you. Maybe they're working on those things. Because you know, I really don't want to walk all the way into the truck stop, even after I reserve a shower on my, my MyPilot app. I don't want to walk all the way in here and find out I have five guys in front of me and no showers ready. I would like to know before I leave my truck if my shower is actually available or if I'm, you know, in line behind ten people. Maybe the, the upgrades for the, for the app as time goes on will include that. Well, Diesel, you're going to end the vlog because I already took my pants off and I'm ready to go to bed, so tell the good people to come back tomorrow. Look at those eyes. How could you resist those eyes? You got beautiful eyes, Diesel. Very beautiful eyes. We'll see you guys tomorrow. And so ends another Trucker Josh vlog. Thanks for watching, guys. I leave you with this picture of the Flying J Denny's. Just in case you weren't hungry, you're welcome. I don't know why I took this picture. I try to shoot for 10 still pictures a day. That's it, that's all I ask of myself. 10 pictures a day. I got one. Sometimes if I'm lucky I get like three, four, maybe five. I'd like to have 10 per day just to put at the end of the vlog here so that I have something to talk over, right? But no, I forget to take pictures all day and then I leave you staring at like this pointless picture of the Flying J, because it's the only one I have. Ah, oh well. Just finished editing this up here now. Diesel is snoring away beside me. Ruining my voiceover, man. Thanks for watching. If you did like the vlog, best way to support me and the vlog is to hit that like button. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You know the drill. Every YouTuber does this every time they end a vlog. If you hit that subscribe button, 
you'll get my videos in your feed every single day. You can even turn on notifications so that you get an email. No pressure. I hope to see you here tomorrow, anytime after 4 a.m. Central Time, here in North America. Have a good one.